strong, isn't he? He can be strong in the Savior's love. Hallelujah. And even through the storm, we can still say, He is Lord of all. Hallelujah. And I hope you receive that this morning because He is still the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And nothing going to get to you unless the Father filters it. So if he allows it to come, it's going to work for your good, and you're going to be, God's going to be glorified, and we're going to be better off as a result. Amen? Amen. Yeah, so yes, let's not be like the uh, other ten. Let's be like Caleb and Joshua, and let's be the ones that say, we can do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So amen. God bless you today. I want to apologize for our sound system. It's not sounding like it ought to be yet, but we are fine-tuning it. And uh, Lord's willing, we believe in next week, next Sunday, we're going to have this thing corrected. Amen. We've got our video going strong. Now our sound is not coming out quite right. That's all right. Most of but don't want y'all to hear the good news, but that's all right. God is in control. He's given us the authority, so we're going to fix this. <laughs> yes, we're going to fix this. Yeah, our voices of praise. God bless you all for coming and serving so well. So at this time now, we get ready for the word of the Lord. Somebody say the word. You know, the scripture declares we should not just live by the natural bread alone, but we should live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that means we can't dissect it and pick and choose what word we want to listen to or what word we want to live by and push other words away. We got to listen and eat the whole loaf. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, eat the whole roll. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes it doesn't, all of it don't taste good, but it'll help us. Amen. It's like medicine. Some of that nasty medicine is the worst, but it helps you. When you take it and let it do what it's supposed to do in our system, it helps us. So the word of the Lord again is coming. You all may be seated here in the sanctuary. The word of the Lord again is coming through our dear son here in the gospel, Elder James Hicks. He loves the Lord, and I believe God is preparing him for greater, not only just in his own private, public life, but even in the spiritual life. I believe God is preparing him for greater. So I encourage you to continue to pray for him. And let's open up our hearts and get ready to receive the word of the Lord. Elder James, he's coming. Uh, Elder James is coming. I'm just going to hit him. Say amen for him. Amen. 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 As we get ready to get started and get to the word, we'll go to the scripture first, actually. We'll read the scripture, and then we'll get into a prayer. We're going to go to St. Luke, the 8th chapter. And uh, as you find it, if you don't mind standing as we uh, get ready to read the word of the Lord from St. Luke, the 8th chapter. Just going to read a couple verses, and then we're actually going to focus on some additional verses in St. Luke as we read a little bit about the parable of the sower. Uh, today we're going to talk about the importance of the word. Very simple. The importance of the word uh, is probably possibly going to be part of a series I'm going to do, uh, the Word of God series, talking about uh, different elements of the word. Uh, but this one is the importance of the word. As we come from Luke, the eighth chapter, and we'll read a couple of verses, uh, four through eight. Luke eight and four says, and when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city. He spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Verse 6. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Verse 7. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And verse 8, and other fell on good ground and sprang up, and this is the part, and bare fruit a hundred fold. And when he had said these things, he cried, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. 
the importance of the word. Father God, Lord, we thank you. Yes. We thank you, God, for opening up our understanding on this morning, Father, as we talk about the word of God. Yes. Lord, we ask that you would anoint my lips, God, so I will speak the words that you would have me to speak. Let me be a vessel to be used by you at this time as we yes. speak the word. We ask that you bless every individual in the sanctuary as well as those that are online that are viewing us through social media. We praise and worship your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. You can be seated if you like. We're talking about the importance of the word. Like I said, this will possibly be part of a series I'm going to do, the word of God. And you think of the word of God. And the first thing I started thinking about when I think about the word of God is how much as Christians, we sometimes take the word of God for granted. All right. yeah. First thing I thought about. Yeah. We take the word of God for granted, and I think we do that because we don't realize the importance of the word. This word of God, these are not just words. The word of God is God. The word of God is God, just like your word is you. No different. All right? We have some married people here. When you were dating your significant other, how did you get to know them, especially on the first couple dates? You got to know them by what they said by their word. And you took what they said and you're able to kind of formulate who this person is. Right. Your word is you. Right. Just like this word is God. That is the importance of the word. Yeah. When you read the word, you are hearing the word of God. His actual voice yeah. is speaking through these pages. Yeah. That is the importance of the word. The word of God is so important that there are enemies and elements that are trying to stop you from receiving the word. Yeah. That's how important it is. That's, right. That's how important it is. Think about it. If your words are that important, and if you think about some of the, the, the great people, um, let's say the John F. Kennedy's, Malcolm X's, Martin Luther King, their word was so important that there were people that actually came to stop right. their words mm -hmm. because it was so important, it was so poignant that they wanted to wipe it out. That is what is happening when it comes to the word of God. There are elements and enemies that want to take that word. And they don't want, it doesn't want it to plant roots in your life because the enemy knows that if that happens, you're going to be powerful Amen. and unstoppable. Amen. 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 So what we're actually going to do is we read verses 4 through 8, but I'm actually going to focus on as we actually go through this, um, verses 9 through possibly 15. We're going to focus on those verses. Um, which is, there's only a few times in the word of God that God actually broke down the parable. A lot of times he'd give the parable and, and it was, you know, pretty much self-explanatory. But he found that the word of God is so important that he said, you know what? We're going to actually break this down. I want to make sure that you guys understand exactly what I'm saying word for word. And so we're going to go through this and basically let Jesus teach this message today. Amen? Amen. So, before we jump into uh, those verses... I want you to know this. There are three hindrances that we're going to talk about. Three hindrances that hinder you from receiving the word. The first hindrance is the devil. Right. We'll talk about that. The second hindrance is lack of roots. Okay. And then the third hindrance is thorns. Right. Got the devil, the lack of roots, and thorns. So, I'm going to go ahead and start at verse 9 and then read down to 12. Verse 9 says, And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? Okay. And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Stop right there. The seed. So as we get ready to talk, the seed is the word of God. You with me so far? So, verse 12 says, Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil. Oh, here we go. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So the first hindrance we have is who? The devil. The devil is our first hindrance. And I found that so interesting that God set up this parable so specific that the devil is the first thing that he speaks about because he's the first one we have to tackle right. when we're trying to receive the word. Because right. he's the first one that's going to come up and say, oh, 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 stop, stop, stop. I don't want you to get that. Because right. he knows 
Once you get that word, like I said earlier, you're going to be unstoppable and you're going to be powerful. He knows that. So let's talk about this a little deeper. It says, those by the wayside are, are they that hear, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts. So wait, so the first question is, how does he do that? How does the devil take away the word out of your heart? If it's already there, how does he do it? I'm going to tell you how he does it. He does it by telling you things like this. That don't apply to you. <laughs> that's not That's not for you. That's for somebody else. That's not for you. He tells you other stuff like this. If God loves you as much as they say, why did such and such happen? Yes, sir. Those are ways that he snatches the word yeah. right out of your heart. Yeah. Here's, here's what I, I tend to hear because the devil can speak through other people. He'll, he'll drop the thought in your head, but then he'll get somebody else to also throw stuff at you. You know all those Christians are hypocrites, right? So you just got this exciting word, and, and you're trying to share it, and then somebody hits you with, you know all those Christians are hypocrites. How about this? How are you going to be blessed and prosperous when you've been poor all your life? How, how, they're talking about this prosperity, how God's going to bless you. How's that going to happen? You poor, your mama was poor, your, your dad before that was poor. How's that going to happen? Basically, what the devil is, does is that, remember, the seed is the word. That's right. God plants the seed, but guess what? The devil plants his own seed mm -hmm. to combat what the word is saying. That's right. So then, whichever one that you are hearing and submitting to the most is the one that wins. Yeah. Meaning, if you are not totally submitting yourself into the word and continue to consume it, yeah. but now you're consuming the word of other people and what they're thinking, that now snatches the word right out of your heart. Because yeah. now you don't believe it. Now you can't receive it because you don't believe the word because somebody else convinced you not yeah. to believe the word. Amen? Yeah. Remember Eve in the garden? God it gave Adam an evil word. That's right. He said, listen, I'm implementing the tithing method with you guys. See all these trees, all this garden, all of this. You got it. It's all you. But guess what? There's one particular one right here. That's, right. that's mine. Don't, Don't touch, touch it. it. Leave it alone. But everything else, as much as you want, however often you want, I don't care. That one, don't touch it. That was the word. That's right. yeah. But guess what? The devil had another word. <laughs> He came out and was like, oh, well, what, what, did, what did God tell you? That you were going to surely die if you eat of this tree? You're not going to surely die. Come on now. You're stretching it a little bit. God was stretching it. You're not going to surely die. You know, look how, look how good it looks. Look at the fruit. Look how good it looks. And guess what? If you eat of it, you're going to be wise and you're going to be just like him. Don't you want to be just like him? Don't you want to know everything he has? Because then he can't tell you nothing because now you're as smart as he is. Go on, take a bite. And then make sure you give a piece to Adam, too. Because you eat me, it's not going to be enough. You got to give it to him. That's really the whole setup. <laughs> you got to give it to him. But I'm going to start with you. I think you're a little weaker. And Adam's going to fall for it. <laughs> Ain't that right, Lottie? <laughs> <laughs> That's what my brother in a little bit. <laughs> That's what my brother in a little bit. <laughs> so... So, so, so that's how the devil does it. That's how that's how he stands the word. Because he, he gave Eve another word, a contradictory word. She believed that word more than the word of God. And here we are today. Amen. That's how he does it. So now that, that I've showed you how the devil snatches the word according to what the Bible says, I showed you how he does it. How do you stop the devil from snatching the word? How do you do it? James 4 and 7 says this. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Yes, yes. Resist the devil yes, yes. and he will flee mm -hmm. from you. That's <laughs> Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we have to reject those negative thoughts. And, and I like what Pastor says. Pastor calls the devil out for who he is. A liar. That's right, right. So once you once those thoughts come in your head and people start you know, spitting out his lies to you, you call the devil what he is. You are a liar. Right. There is no truth in you. Right. He is built on lies. So anything that he puts in your head, it's easy to tell because if it's contrary to the word, it's a lie. Right. That's it. Right. 
Bottom line, I don't care if it's your mom that tells you this. If it's contrary to the word of God, the devil is causing her to lie to you. And when you realize that, now you can call it out. But it also says to submit yourself. You have to submit yourself. Like I mentioned earlier, submit yourself to the word of God. Submit yourself to God. And then you have the strength and you have the courage to call him out. And not to, not even to entertain the lies that he tries to hit you with. Amen? Amen. So we have to submit ourselves even more to God and his word in order to resist yeah. the enemy yeah. that comes against us, that wants to snatch it from us. Right. You with me so far? Mm -hmm. All right. So our first hindrance is who? The devil. Yeah. The devil. All right. So we talked about that. Now, our second hindrance is going to be lack of roots. And we're going to talk about that in verse 13. Verse 13 says, they on the rock are they. Yeah, they on the rock are they which when they hear, receive the word with joy. That's right. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation, right. fall away. Now, this is funny because the first thing I thought about, I read this verse and I'm getting into it. But then the first thing that came to my mind was, so the devil's not the only reason that we, re we do not receive the word. Right. A lot of times we like to blame the devil for pretty much everything. Like, ah, oh, he did it that. But according to the word, he's not the only reason. He's, he's one of them. But there are other elements that are involved that can also prevent you from receiving the word of God. So, this is one of the other reasons. This is the thing I found interesting. In verse 13, it says, They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. So, wait a minute. So, these are individuals who are excited about it. Yes. They received the word. They're like, oh my God, this word is life changing. I got it. I got it. We, we had a guy, a guy one time. I got to tell it, Pastor. I got to tell it. I got to tell I'm excited. I got the word. I got to, I got to tell it, Pastor. I got to do it. And it's exciting. And I understand because most of us, we did receive that excitement. The word hits you, and, and it, it's like that light. That, 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 you know, light comes on you. Like, oh, wow. I, yeah, I didn't realize. And, and you are excited about it. But then the issue comes. When they don't establish roots. Right. Now, what does that mean, elders? Yeah. Establishing roots is they don't come to Bible study. Oh, oh. They don't read the word for themselves. All right. okay. They don't connect themselves with a, a ministry that's firmly teaching the word of God. All right. See, what happens is they get that one word and that one Sunday and they get it and then they just run with it. I like if you, you know, a part of this ministry, you know, when you join this ministry, one of the things that pastor says, you know, after the end, and he brings you in, he says, hey, first is get you a Bible. Get you a Bible. You need a Bible. You need to read the word. And then he says, you need to connect yourself with a ministry. When you're coming in here, this is your ministry. You need to be here as often as you can be here. And you need to be praying every day and, and everything that comes around it. Why is he telling you that? Because he wants you to establish roots. Yeah. Because pastor knows that if you don't do that, it's going to be that easy for temptation That's to right. pull you away. Right. So you need to get and get firm and start establishing roots as soon as possible. Amen. Because when you don't do that, when you don't go to the studies and you're not reading the Bible and everything, that word, it just slowly starts to fade. Right. It's slowly, because did it just say that the word is the seed? The seed is the word, right? right. Yeah. If you don't water a seed, right. yeah. want it die? Yeah. No different. That word that's in there will die if it's not being watered. So we have to make sure that we are watering that seed so we don't just have that momentary joy. That's right. yeah. That momentary joy is all well and good. And then this is the thing. Some people, they come to church just to get that momentary joy, but still never plant roots. Because they like to feel it. Oh, I felt so good. Came to church, shot it, ran around. Okay, what did you do once you left? <laughs> what happened on Monday? <laughs> Did you, did you at least open, did you crack the book open a little bit and read a verse? Did you do anything? Did you come, what happened on Wednesday Bible study? Did you show up? Yeah. I mean, did you, I mean, now it's online. Did you go back and at least watch it online? And, no, no. no. Where's the roots? Where are the roots? So then it says, and these have no roots, which for a while believe. That's right, for a while. They believe for a while because they're happy, they joy. For a while, believe. And in time of temptation, fall away. So when temptation comes, they can't 
stand because the roots are not there. So all it takes is the right temptation and then it whisks you away. You were so strong, you were so zealous, yeah. you were so joyful, but you didn't establish roots. Amen? Amen? Didn't establish roots. So first, if you're talking about roots, how did we establish those? First, you have to make sure that you establish yourself in the word of God. Everything starts with the word. Yeah. Let's, let's get there. Everything starts with the word of God. So we have to make sure that we're establishing ourselves in the word. Psalms 119 and 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Because you hide that word deep in your heart so that you don't sin against God. That is part of uh, establishing the roots yeah. because you're establishing yeah. the roots in the word of God. Yeah. So the, the word of God is what's going to gonna, gonna like hold you in and lock you down. Because when the temptation comes, when the devil comes and everything like that, now you're established. But this is how you do it is through the word of God. Amen? Amen. The word also says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. How do you get strong in the Lord? The word of God gives you that strength. So let's not get into that temporary joy, that, that momentary feeling, and then just, just chase after that. We need to be chasing after the word. We need to chase after God himself yeah. and make sure that we are getting rooted and grounded in this word so that we can stand when temptation comes. Yeah. Amen. With me so far? Yeah. So our first hindrance was who? The devil. And the second hindrance was what? No. Lack, of Lack of roots. So let's talk about the third one. The third one is thorns. This one was really, really interesting to me. The third one was thorns. So verse 14 says, And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with three things. Cares, riches, and pleasures of this life. All right, I'm going to stop right there. So this is the thing. They fell amongst thorns, so they heard it. They heard the word. They go forth. And the first thing that catches them is the cares. Uh -oh. It's the cares. So what does that mean? Elder, what does that mean? Well, I mean, I heard, I heard the word. The word was good. The message was good. And it really touched me. I, I think I need to change my life. But those, those bills are still due. Mm -hmm. I ain't got enough money to pay them. I guess I need to put that first. I need to handle that first, and then I'll come back okay. to this. Okay. But I need to handle these issues first, these cares first. I got to deal with that. The word, the word was great. The message was good, and I really, I really connected with what the pastor was saying. It was really good stuff. But this kid's still crazy. <laughs> Little Johnny just got suspended. Uh, uh, Edward was just fighting yesterday. Oh, yeah. but, but, but my daughter is about to get kicked out of school. What? I deal with that word later. We'll we'll get into that. But I gotta deal with the kids. Because this is serious right here. You know, I'm I'm into the word and I'm trying I'm trying to connect and I'm trying to connect to it and I'm trying to pay attention. I want to read the word, but uh they just possessed my car yesterday. How am I gonna get back and forth to work? How am I gonna pick the kids up from school? How am I gonna do I get, I got a grocery shopping, how am I gonna do this? No, I, I, it's gonna cost this much amount of money in order to get uh, get the car back. I don't have that money. What, what, what are we going to do? The cares of the world can just distract you from yes. the important thing, which is the word of God. Yes, yes. Sir. That's what he means by the cares. Uh, uh, I, I heard the word, and I still caught COVID-19. That's right. I still, I thought they was saying I, they, I wasn't going to be sick, and God was going to heal me, and all this stuff. I still ended up going to the hospital. Ah, forget this word. The cares. The cares of the world. And what you end up doing is putting the cares of the world All right. above the things right. of God. And so now you push that on the back burner because you feel like, i got to handle these issues. Yeah. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the cares. So then he says, not just that, but riches. riches. Ooh. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Riches. How does that work? Yeah. I hear the word and... Uh, and it said all this good stuff, but you know what? I depend on my money. My money can get me out of that. My, mo my money can get me out of this situation. Why, do I really need to, you know, listen to the word and depend on God if, if I'm financially stable enough to deal with every issue? 
And think about that. That makes sense because even the Bible said that money answereth all things. But the part about it that, that you have to realize is that doesn't mean it's going to always give you the right answer. That's right. Money can answer it, it pretty much any problem. But that doesn't mean it's the right answer. If you're, you know, maybe trying to get a divorce from your wife and she's trying to, you know, take half of what you want and you, you don't want to do that and you have a lot of money, I mean, your money can say, hire a hitman. That'll fix the problem. <laughs> and I mean, is that an answer? Yes. Is that the right answer? I guess it depends on who you are, but uh, probably not. <laughs> not trying to give you guys any ideas. <laughs> but I'm showing, I'm showing you how. If you have a lot of money and you have wealth, that can now be what you depend on to make your decisions. You don't have to. You don't want to depend on the word or anything like that because you have riches. You have money. Think about it. Why do you think so many people that, that are wealthy and do well, when they lose their wealth or lose the majority of it, commit suicide? Why do you think they do that? Because that's where their faith lies. Their faith lies in what they had. Um, think about the rich young ruler. He went, came to Jesus and he was all, he, he sounded like he fell into one with the joy. He had all the joy and excitement. Yeah, I want to I follow you, Lord. And God laid out some stuff. And he said, yeah, I've been doing that since my youth. You know, I heard my mother and father and doing all that stuff. I'm good on that. Oh, Jesus said, okay, cool. Uh, just sell what you got. Come on. Come on. Join the team. We're ready. Just sell all that stuff and come on. Rich young ruler like, <laughs> no. Wait, hold on. So, so, so I got to sell the Rolls Royce? I got to, you see that car? I got to sell, you want me to sell? Yeah, you, you know I'm not going to get the money that I paid for it, you know? You know I'm not going to get that. I got the, Ro the Ro I gotta sell the Rolex? You know what? All right, Jesus, give me a few days to think about it. And I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to get back to you. Just let, me, let me, just let me think about it for a minute. Just let me, you know. Jesus never heard from him again. <laughs> he got never showed back up. He was tied to what he had. Riches. The riches caused him not to follow. He had the opportunity to be a disciple. Right. It, right. He'd have been in the book. Right. Like he was in the book. They didn't call him by name. Because he wasn't that important. They're like, well, we, we just use you as a story, bro. <laughs> if he'd have followed, he might have had a name in the book. <laughs> but no, he decided to be rich. Now we don't know who he is. He's just a random rich guy. Young rich ruler. But that's what it means by the riches. Okay? And then the third thing is the pleasures of this life. The pleasures of this life. Man, I, I would I would if the word was good and now I try to connect to it, but um I already told my, my, my friends I was gonna go party with them next weekend. We supposed to go party, uh, we supposed to drink, we're gonna turn up, we're gonna get high, we're gonna get faded, and and we just gonna enjoy ourselves, you know? And you know, I, I you know I like the fast life with the cars and the jewelry and the women and all of this. That's 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 the lifestyle. I, I don't really have time to focus on the word because you know when I'm doing all of this and then I even try to come to church now I feel condemned and I feel messed up because I, everything I was doing all week now I'm like uh, maybe not. Well, I, I'll do the word another time. Yeah. And that's how he gets you with the pleasures of his yeah. life. <clears throat> he makes you feel like. That is more important than God. Right. And that ends up being the problem is that we put everything above God, above the word of God. The pleasures of this life, the riches, the cares. And, and once you put that above God, then guess what? You leave no room for God because he's not going to take. If he's not first, he don't want me nothing. That's right. God says, seek me first. Now, you try to put me second, third, I'll just get out the equation. So. If, if your situation convinces you to put God down on the notch, then that's when these things take over that's right. and God sits back. And the word that was there is now evaporated. Yeah. The pleasures of this life. The pleasures of this life can really get you caught up. But then there was another caveat in there when he says, uh, are choked out with the cares, the riches, and pleasures of this life. And then it says, and bring no fruit to perfection. So when I thought, when I read that, I found that interesting because so even with all that going on, you still may bring forth some fruit, but it's just not going to be to perfection. So if you think about it from, from a you know fruit standpoint, if you have an apple, 
and you don't allow it to uh, you know sit on the vine long enough, and, and you yeah. you know pull it off too early, yeah. what good is it? It's not to perfection. You didn't allow it right. Can you eat it? I mean, you might you might might mess you up if you if you eat it and it's not right. It's no good. More, more than likely, you end up throwing it away. It says God, God wants us to bring fruit to perfection, but if you allow all of these cares and riches and all this other stuff to go before him, you're not bringing any fruit to perfection. Think about this. You have people who have all this money, and you see people, you know, you know, with social media, you get to see supposedly everybody's life. A lot of that stuff is not true, but either way, you see that it looks like they're living these high lives. But do you know how many sad people are behind uh, all of these Instagram pages and, and social media accounts yeah. that are miserable, mm-hmm. their lives are horrible because none of their fruit is to perfection. Yes, yeah. Their lives are horrible. They have anxiety. They have depression. They're taking all kinds of medications. We see so many celebrities die off of not just illegal medication, but legal medication. Why are they taking all of this stuff? You think they're happy? You think they're taking it because they're healthy and well and life is great? No, they're taking it because they're miserable. And they're trying to numb it any way they can. Yeah. And because they have money, remember, money answereth all things. Give me an answer. Take this drug. Take that drug. Take that drug. Take that drug. Mix it up into a cocktail. Your body can't handle it. So all of this stuff makes your fruit not come to perfection, mainly because you're not planted in the word. That's right. And you're allowing everything else to take precedent over the word of God. Amen. Amen. But there is hope. All right. There is hope. Where's the hope at? It's in verse 15. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, All right. having heard the word, keep it. We're going to talk about that keeping it. All right. And bring forth fruit with patience. So first thing he says is it falls but that on good ground. Now what's good ground? Those with an honest heart. An honest heart. An honest heart is that one that is honest about what you have done. You're honest about your life. You're honest about where you are in life and you're repentant of your sins. God, I'm, I'm open. I'm open, Lord. I'm open. I know I've messed up. I know I, I know I got this going on. I got that going on. The whole nine yards. But I want your word. I want you to fill me up with the word of God. I want you to fill me up with the spirit of God. I am an open vessel. I'm showing you all my flaws. That's me being honest with you, God. That's an honest heart. An honest heart is a heart that says, God, I know I'm not perfect. I probably never will be. But I am striving for that perfection. I'm striving to be perfect in your sight. That's honesty. That's not any pride wrapped up in there. That's just, I'm, I'm just open and honest with you, God. So then he didn't just say an honest heart, but he also said a good heart. All right, A good heart is a heart that's willing to put away the bad things. God, I know I got this in my life, and, and with your help, I'm going to put all this to the side, God. I, I know what I got going on. I know I'm messed up. But God, with your help, we're going to move all this out. I, I am a willing participant from this day forth. I'm going to get into your word, and whatever your word says to do, I'm going to do it. Amen? That is a good heart. So you're willing to put away the bad things. A good heart is a heart that no longer makes excuses. All right, all right. No longer makes excuses. Oh, uh, man, I, I work I work so late on Friday, uh, on Saturday, I can't come to church on Sunday. Or, oh man, no Bible study tonight. I'm tired, man. I'm, I'm so tired. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to make it. Uh, oh man, I didn't get to read my word. I ain't read the word all week, but I'll get around to it. A good heart doesn't make excuses anymore. It takes the word at face value. Right. It takes it, whatever the word says, I'm going with it. And I'm going to do my best to do what the word says. I'm going to do my best to start planting roots. I'm going to do my best to make sure that you get these thorns out of my life and make sure the devil doesn't snatch the word out of my heart. Right, right. That is a good heart. So he says, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. You keep it. After hearing the word, you keep it. Another way to look at keeping the word, protect it. You protect it. 
That's that's different. Okay, it's it's it's, it's one thing to, to just have something, but it's, some, it's something else to protect that's it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we you, you you have certain things that you have, and you know, like a pen. You have a pen today, you lose it tomorrow. Okay, it's whatever. But certain things, like your kids, I hope you, you protect your kids. Nobody, you're not gonna have a kid one day and it's gone tomorrow. Like that's it shouldn't be that way. You protect your kids, and why do you do that? Because they're the importance that they are in your life. The word needs to be that important to you where you now protect it. I protect the word. When I protect it, I don't let just anybody uh, feed into me. I don't let anybody try to sow their seeds into me to snatch the word out. No, no, no. I reject that. Right. Protecting the word means there's some places I don't go because I know that it's going to, to counteract the word that God has placed in my yeah. heart. So I'm not going there anymore. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I will excuse myself. Sorry, hey guys. I, I'm, I'm going to head out. Yeah. Good seeing you. I'm gone. Because now I'm keeping the word. I'm yeah. protecting it. When I'm protecting it, I'm not allowing the devil to steal it. That's right. Because I'm protecting it now. The devil can't easily come in and just drop something. No, 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 devil. You are a liar. And I'm not listening to that. If I'm listening to music that's causing me to doubt the word of God, I will no longer listen to that. Because now I protect the word because I want to keep it. I want to hold on to it because I know how important it is. Yeah, yeah. The word has to become that important in our lives. I don't allow the, 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 the word to fall away because I refuse to, to establish roots. I, I find my church home. I'm there. I'm getting the word every chance I get. I make sure that I'm in my word for myself. I'm reading the Bible whenever I can. I am establishing my own roots in the word of God. Yes. So yes. now I can't, you know, I won't easily fall off because now I'm getting solid. Mm -hmm. And I won't allow, because I'm keeping the word, to be choked out by thorns and the worldly pleasures. That's right. I don't do that anymore because I'm keeping the word. I'm keeping it safe. It's like if you, you know, found a diamond and, and you know, eventually you want to sell it, but you know, you know, somebody knows you got this giant diamond, they might try to steal it. What would you probably do? You probably try to find your safe or something, or find find something place that you can keep it where you know it's safe. I want to keep this, I want to protect this, I don't want anybody to steal it. But there are certain things in our lives that we could care less if it pops up missing or not. Okay, so what? I don't care. That should not be the word of God. We should want to protect the word of God. Keep the word. Hold on to the word. And when you do that, mm -hmm. what does it say? You bring forth fruit. You bring forth fruit. And then when we go back to what he said in verse 8, he said, and spring up and bear forth fruit. He said, a hundredfold. That's right. So you're not just bringing forth fruit, but a hundredfold fruit. Who here wants to be fruitful? If I'm by myself, that's fine. I'll be the only fruitful one. I have no issue with that. As long as I'm fruitful. <laughs> God says he wants you to be fruitful. And this is how he gave it to me in my head. You get into the word of God. All right? You get into the word of God, and he causes you to bear forth fruit using a, a, just a physical analogy. Four apples. Four apples. You're, you're starting to bear forth fruit. In each of them apples, there's about four or five seeds. Or more. So now, if you take those seeds and those apples, say 15 seeds all together, and you plant those 15 seeds, all right. and you give it time, now you have 15 apple trees. All right. And each apple tree, let's just say, produces 30 apples. Some of them, you know, may come out, may not come out, right? So maybe 20 of them are well. So out of the four apples, you now have all of these trees now that are growing and producing even more fruit. And guess what? Out of all of those apples, guess what? What's in the apple? That's right. More seed, right? That's more trees. That's right. You get more time and you continue to be diligent. The next thing you know, you got acres of apples that you can now use to eat, use to sell, use to give away, use to bless other people. You are now fruitful. And fruitful is not just for you, it's for others. I'm fruitful enough. You want to get to the point where I'm fruitful enough, I can give Amanda fruit. I can give Fred fruit. I can I can give Ward fruit. I can now share of the abundance that God has given me. Amen? Amen. That is true fruitfulness. If you're only fruitful enough to take care of yourself, you haven't gotten there yet. Where God wants you to be is fruitful where I can help others. And I can now give and sow into others' lives. Amen? Amen. Yes, so he says... 
bring forth fruit. Because remember in verse 14 it says, you brought forth, bring no fruit to perfection. So you brought fruit, but it wasn't coming to perfection. But now I'm bringing forth perfect fruit. Them apples that look nice and good and red and nice and crisp. You bite it and they crunch. Ooh. Oh, man. Especially leave it in the refrigerator a little bit, nice and cold. And, oh, okay. right. I love apples, by the way. <laughs> so that's the type of fruit that he wants you to bring forth. But there's still something else you have to keep in mind in verse 15. You bring forth fruit, but with patience. With patience. It's, and that's why, once again, it's important to read the word because you need to know this because you start to think that, oh, after I hear the word and get to church that, oh, the next day I should be bringing forth fruit. <laughs> Everything should happen. <laughs> the, fruit, the fruit should start coming. I should start seeing the money and start seeing the health and start seeing the wellness and all these blah, 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 blah. with patience. Because think about it. How long did it take you to jack your life up? It took a little while, right? It took a while to jack your life up. You know, you eating cake and, and bonbons all the time. You gained all this weight. It took, you know, it took some time. So, don't you think it'll take a little bit of time to start seeing the fruit start to manifest in your life as you get more rooted and grounded in the Word? He says with patience. He puts it in there so you know it's going to take some time. So, let's not start thinking that it's going to be a rush job. You know, because like I said, you get yourself in the mess. It wasn't a rush job. You was willing to wait. And, and continue to, to get deeper and deeper in the mess. So let's give God time to do what he needs to do yes, so that yes, yes. it will be perfect. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to happen overnight. But that's the importance of the word. That's right. That's the importance of the word because it's not going to happen overnight. But guess what? Once you get into the word, now God walks with you. Mm -hmm. And he talks with you. Mm -hmm. When the disciples were with Jesus and they met Jesus and they started following him, and, you know, they start hearing his parables and hearing him, you know, minister. And he start healing people. Did they go out the next day and start healing people, too? Didn't work like that, right? They was actually with Jesus for a while before, before they actually started branching out. They had to receive the Holy Spirit first. They had to receive the words because they were with the word of God. They were with him every day. They were getting the word every day. They were growing in the word. They got the Holy Spirit. And then they were ready to branch out. It took time. Uh, I think about Paul. When he was on the Damascus Road and he had, had his experience or whatever, and um, you know he finally went back to town. He was Ananias or whatever. They took, you know, got the shit, uh, scales off his eyes. Did he start preaching the next day? No, no, he had to be taught. People had to teach him. He had to get trained and also receive the Holy Spirit. And then he went forward. It takes time. It takes time. But anybody that has been through this and is connected to the Word will tell you, oh, it's more than worth it. Right. It's more than worth it. Amen. It's more than worth it, especially when you start to see the fruit. The fruit that's not just in this day, but the fruit that is to come. Yeah. 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 The fruit, because, you know, the more, you know, the older you get, you really start to realize how short life really is. Mm -hmm. life, is life is really short. Like, it, 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 I'm like, I'm just like, man, I'm probably more than halfway through mine. Like, this is, time goes by fast. Life is short. But once we leave here, it's no longer short. That's everlasting. And listen, we just talked about how, how, how the devil will plant seeds to, to kind of override the seed of God. Well, another lie that he tell you, oh, oh, don't worry about heaven or hell. That doesn't exist. And no, you ain't got to worry about that. Don't let him plant that seed. You got two choices once you live here. Leave here. Only two. Up or down. And God, he has the word to give you the choice to make the right choice. He tells you in this whole book how to make the right choice. It's not that hard. But that's the long part of, of life. This is the very, 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 very minute short part. But we have to get this right so that we can bear fruit, not just now, but in the everlasting. Amen? That is the importance of the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. As we get into prayer and close this out, Father God, Lord, we thank you for the word that teaches us the importance of the word of God. Lord, your word changes lives, Lord. Lord, your, your word turns on the light bulb in our head, God, so that we can see clearly, Father. And we thank you for the word that is our guiding light. Lord, that is our map, 
Lord, that shows us where to go and how to get there. We thank you for the word, God. We thank you for the word which is God, which is you, which represents you. We thank you for having it here for us, Lord. And Lord, we will no longer take your word for granted, God. We won't take your word for granted, Lord, but we will eat of the word on a daily basis, God, so that we can become fruitful, God. And not just fruitful for ourselves and for our family, God. We want to be able to produce fruit to help others, to be able to give to others, to be able to bless other people, God. We thank you for the fruit, God. We thank you for the fruit, God. We thank you for the fruit, God. We thank you for the fruit that you have supplied here, even in this ministry, God. Lord, that we are able to help others, God, and you will continue to expand us, Lord, with more fruit. Yes. So we can continue to help not just this city, God, the, the state, God, and maybe even the nation, God. Lord. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done, God, and we thank you for teaching us the importance of the word. And we will continue to put you first, put your word first, put the things of God first, not the pleasures of this life, not riches, God, not our cares, God, but you come first. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for everything you've done for us and all the many blessings. We ask these things now in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 That is the importance Amen. of the word. Amen. Amen. Amen.